So we've looked at multiplication and division with those radical expressions. Now we're going to look at adding and subtracting them and a little bit more multiplication. So any two real numbers we can add together. So real meaning rational, irrational, those kinds. And if we try to find the sum of these two, it has to be expressed as 5 plus root 2. Because 5 is rational, but 2, um, excuse me, the square root of 2 is irrational. We would have to approximate this to be able to combine those two terms together. So we can't simplify that without using an approximation. So we wouldn't be able to combine those two because they're not like terms. They're not of the same kind. One is rational, one is irrational, and we could approximate it with rationals. So when we're dealing with um, trying to combine radicals with addition or subtraction, we need their backs to match exactly. We have to have the same exact um, radical with the same exact radicand to be able to combine them. So when we have like radicals, in this case, we have the same radical and the same radicand. Everything, their butts both match, that's usually what I say. Then we can combine them, we can collect our like terms. So I've got three factors of root 5 living over here, and I'm adding four factors of root 5 to that. So all together I've got seven factors of root 5. We could treat root 5 as a variable. If I said 3x plus 4x, they are like terms, we can combine them together, we would have 7x. Same concept. So when we have radicands that are different, we can't combine them together as they stand right now, but we can alter them a little bit. We can start simplifying, and then maybe we might be able to combine them later. So that first example, Root 2 I can't break down any farther, but root 18 can be written as the square root of 9 and 2. Perfect square and something else. So what evaluates out of here? We have 5 root 2, nothing changed there, and I'm subtracting perfect square of 3, and I'm left with root 2. So now their butts match exactly. So we can combine them. How many factors of root 2 are we left with? I had 5, I took away 3, I'm left with 2 factors of root 2. So we need to have the radicands matching exactly underneath the radical to be able to combine them. So part B, we can break this one up farther. And 4 is a perfect square. How can we break up x cubed? Largest even powers, one less, and we need a leftover. And nothing is going to change over here since x is not a perfect square. So what evaluates out of this first term? Perfect square uh, 4 is a perfect square of 2. x squared is a perfect square of x. And our leftovers, we have root x. So now that they match exactly, what about in that case? Can I combine 2x and 7 together, like I could up here? 5 and negative 3 were like terms, so we could combine them. But down there I can't, because I'm combining x's in constant terms. So another way to look at this, another way to think about it, is what do these two share in common that I could take out of both of them? That factor of root x. And when we take out root x, what are we left with? 2x and 7. So I have 2x plus 7 factors of root x. If we were given a value of x, we could evaluate. So sometimes it doesn't simplify down quite as nice as we would like. Part C, let's look at another one. Dealing with more variables. So, I need to break this down, and I have subtraction. So I should try to factor on the inside. What is common between x cubed and x squared that we can take out of both? Factor of x squared. When we do that, what are we left with on the inside? 
x minus 1. Hopefully you can see what's coming because between these two, what can we factor out of there? That's common. 4 and we're left with x minus 1. So what's going to evaluate out? The perfect square and the perfect square. What's going to be left over? The exact same radicand. So x squared is a perfect square of x, and we've got our leftovers. 4 is a perfect square of 2, and we've got our leftovers. So all together I have x plus 2 factors of root x minus 1. If we factor that term out of both, we're left with x plus 2. So go ahead and take those next two. Add them together, simplify as far as we can go. So the first one we have common radicands. We can combine them together. So three factors and another nine will give me 12 factors of root two. Done. But for part B, we aren't matching exactly underneath there right now. But how could we break up those numbers into perfect squares and then parts that are matching? So 24, perfect square that we can take out of there is 4. So if I take 4 out of 24, I'm left with 6. And we can kind of cheat with these. Because if I am going to combine them together, I need to break up 54 into a factor that either has 4 or 6 down here. Okay? So how can we break up 54 into a perfect square and something else? 9 and 6. So we can see this will evaluate out. That one will as well and be left with root 6. All right, so square root of 4 is 2. We got our leftovers. Square root of 9 is 3, and we've got our leftovers. Now they match exactly. So I've got 5 factors of root 6. 